so let's let's start then. Uh, this is uh, Occupy Radio, and uh, these people are from Moore, and Moore is again what what is it, Mari? It's the movement of rank and file educators. That's a social justice caucus within the United Federation of Teachers. We have been around since 2013, um, agitating, um, activating members, the rank and file, to speak for what's right for justice. And that's why we're here today um, speaking to you, Mike. You're also a social justice advocate yourself. Yes. Now, I, I mean, the pandemic has really done a lot of damage to the city. Uh, as well as the country, but uh, some of the numbers I've heard about cuts that are planned for education, I'm quite concerned with. I mean, my kids are all grown, and the last one is in college right now out of the state, but uh, I'm concerned for the my friends and their children uh, with some of the things that they may have planned. Amanda, can you uh, explain to us uh, what you know that the city is planning right now? Um, well, I, yeah, I can share a little bit about that. Um, I myself am a, a teacher at a high school in here in Queens and Elmhurst. I teach uh, immigrants. My high school is only for new immigrants. Um, so I've been working in the day doing online classes with my students many of whom don't have a computer or don't have internet service. So it's really been very difficult um, getting our students up and um, you know, able to continue with their education. Um, and so, yeah, when, when this pandemic hit and then we knew that it, was, uh, it wasn't looking good for the budget here in New York State and uh, what Cuomo's response to this has been. Um, I and, and other teachers um, started mobilizing, well, continued our, our mobilization um, as usual, but really focusing more on this, on the budget. So I, I'll go ahead and share my screen since uh, this has, gives a little bit of background and helps kind of guide me and, and uh, and make sure I get everything here. But the, the state budget was passed on April 1st. And as part of that budget, there are a couple of times in the year when we can alter the budget. Um, we could be facing more cuts, and that is the real concern, that uh, there is another budget negotiation coming up June 30th, and then the final one will be in December. And Governor Cuomo is threatening to cut over 20%, even as much as 50% in state funding to our schools. Um, yet there, we know that there is lots of money around for corporate bailouts. We've seen that wow. um, just recently. And here in New York State, we have a solution to tax the rich. That's even a, a tax like the rest of us pay at the same percentage uh, would be much better than what we have now, which is the wealthy really getting off with a much smaller percentage of, of their income taxed. We have 112 billionaires in New York who hold $525 billion in wealth, um, which is more than any place in the world. And we have a regressive tax, uh, as I was saying, where millionaires and billionaires pay much less than teachers and pay much less than people even earning $18,000 a year. And yet 92% of voters by the UFT's own poll, 92% of New York voters favor raising taxes on millionaires and billionaires. So there really is a lot of support for this. Mm -hmm. um, even among millionaires themselves, there's even an organization of patriotic millionaires who want to see their taxes raised. So there's a lot of support for this mm -hmm. among the billionaires, uh, millionaires and billionaires, but um, we don't see the will. Uh, of Cuomo and the and our top legislators in the state. Diff uh, I think yeah. is is losing those people to different states and losing some of their businesses. But as you point out, uh, a lot of these people are volunteering for higher wages. So I, I think we just need to press the governor a lot harder than we've been doing. 
So I'm sorry for interrupting. Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, our legislators really need to hear from us. I feel like right now is a very critical time because the primaries are coming up June 23rd. And many of our legislators have challengers. And I've seen that uh, in my own district that um, legislators are more responsive in the, than in the past at this time uh, when they have a challenger because for a long time, a lot of our legislators have not had challengers. So that what we have um, seen this kind of boom in grassroots activism since um, Bernie's first run in 2016 and with AOC's win, it's pretty exciting. There's a lot of, um, a lot of even teachers who now are, who are running for the state, state level positions. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting and we really need it because the corporate Democrats that we've got, a lot of them have been there a long time. No one never challenges them. Um, and then, and now we're in this situation where Cuomo has been there for so long and, uh, and he's got all of the backing of the billionaires. And so just um, with, in terms of our school's budget, in our state, it's the high poverty school districts like New York City that are high, that face the most uh, cuts. And that's really unfortunate. The Congress earmarked billions of dollars for our high poverty schools. And in New York State, that was 716.9 million in federal aid for New York City. And then Cuomo cut exactly that, exactly 716.9 million in state funding from our New York City schools. And so high poverty districts across the state have seen a huge funding decrease, um, canceling out the federal influx of funds. So um, this is really terrible for schools uh, in our, especially black and brown communities. And we know that uh, schools in the suburbs with more white students are not faring, uh, not having the same uh, funding decreases that we see right now. And then just uh, to go over the tax policy again, this is um, looking at a chart from um, uh, looking at a chart here showing how well off New Yorkers, this is from the Fiscal Policy Institute, well off New Yorkers pay a much smaller share of their income on taxes here at the top 1%, uh, making over $600,000 a year. Uh, they have, they're only paying about 8% in taxes, while folks earning $35,000 a year are paying 12%, so a much higher percentage um, for the, for the, uh, the rich. Even people paying less than 18,000 are paying less, uh, paying more. Oh, that's ridiculous. God. I just yeah. want to add on, before you go, Amanda, I just want to add on to what you're saying. So a lot of educators, Mike, are running, and I'm really glad we have Jamal Bowman, who was in the Bronx and um, parts of Westchester, D16. We have Jabari, um, Mike, who you know very well, Bridgeport. Yes. Who is running, and we have some others. I don't know them as well. Amanda could elaborate on them, but it's a good thing educators are running, just like how GRN against Como in the last um, gubernatorial election. Now we have educators who are coming and making challenges, and that's very important. That's taking a stand as to where we are as educators moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, Amanda. Right, and we yes, I'm really excited about Jabari's candidacy and Jamal Bowman also. Uh, they really need our support. We need a leader at the congressional level uh, for our public schools. And that's why I'm really excited about Jamal Bowman because, uh, you know, our, our state tests that have crushed our schools, that's a federal mandate. That's from No Child Left Behind from 2001. Uh, and, and that's where we need to stop these annual tests is at the federal level. And we've been fighting banging our head against the wall at the state level, and there's only so much we can do there. <laughs> can, uh, can I uh, ask the question that might be off the subject a little? Uh, I've heard uh, comments that Bill Gates is coming to New York to re-image the education uh, in New York. Do, do you have any idea what, what that might be? Is he talking about more online uh, interactions? 
Yes, so the idea is to reimagine schools. Um, we don't know what that reimagine schools look like. To, um, to imagine schools, we need funding, as Amanda is saying. So, so it's, it's an irony to bring in um, a multi-billionaire to, um, to, to improve our schools when, in fact, we need funding. He's not giving us funding, so why is he here? Um, doesn't, all right. doesn't Microsoft own Zoom? I'm not sure. You know, uh, but they but they do own a platform a mic called Microsoft Teams, and they're pushing that in school meetings in SLTs, uh, and uh, you know where that's going next. Soon is going to be a platform to grade and so on and so forth. Um, I don't know much about it. Um, like Amanda was down there meeting with policymakers and so on from AQE. She'll expand on it and so on. Um, but my basic knowledge. Is these guys are here coming inside New York City now for the cash cow that's going to be there and maybe dis displacing a many of us from our teaching professions to yeah, replace but it also us. Also with allows, machines. allows the governor to cut back on the number. You have, I think, 1,700 schools in New York, and that's that's one way of cutting back on the number of schools uh, to reduce his budget. So I'm sorry for interrupting. Go, go ahead, a minute. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just terrible, this uh, reimagining schools. We know that Bill Gates has a terrible record in, our, in New York City of making these small schools, and, and that has been discredited for a long time now. And uh, like Myra said, we know what works. We know that small class sizes work, but that the governor has refused to lower our class size. Uh, and and on, more online learning, the way that Cuomo was talking about, it's just terrible for, for my students who are English language learners. They cannot learn uh, online. They need a lot of interaction, of course. That's how you learn a language. You interact with people in, you know, in person, not, not remotely. Uh, uh, you know, my students are on their phone trying to learn English on their phone, and it, it's really um, it really is no substitute for the community we've built at our school with between the students and the staff. So it's very disturbing that, that this is the way our governor is pushing us. Yeah. I don't we, see any difficulty in uh, bringing that about for colleges. You have a much more mature mind. You have a different learning uh, capacity. Uh, but to, to force that on children in elementary and high school, um, I, I could see it could be very difficult. I, I disagree with you, Mike, because um, even in the higher level, and you teach at the higher level, um, I love really colleagues don't want to be in remote learning. I know we have the blackboard in the, in the CUNY schools. But, and we have hybrid courses, but nobody wants to be in just a remote learning. And you want to see, meet your professor, talk to your professor in person, and you, uh, you teach in higher ed. So uh, you should have that feel of students as well. Um, this remote learning <laughs> may be not the best way to go. Mm. So, all right, Amanda. Uh, well, I have up here, this is information from the Alliance for Quality Education. They've been a great advocate statewide for our public schools. and. It's, here is a, a snapshot of what we're facing for New York State education budget 2020 to 2021. Um, so they have here a comparison of what our schools needed, what they need now, and what they got. And so uh, you can see here there's no increase. Zero percent increase is really a decrease in funding. Any funding that is frozen really means a decrease because, of course, um, costs go up every year. So we are facing big cuts in our state. We've recently heard, um, Myra and I have heard from teachers in Rochester where they're facing over 100 uh, teacher layoffs and the same in Albany today. We also heard of that uh, mass layoffs of teachers in other parts of the state. This is regardless of whether he gets federal money or not. Well, yeah, we, if it's, it's, I mean, we'll see what we can do. That's why we're organizing to really push for new revenue. We need revenue to come into the state. Um, and so that, that's 
why we don't see this as a done deal. It's really up to us. It's in our hands to really press our legislators to get to work raising money for our schools that they've needed for a long time. Before you go to that slide, Amanda, we're just going to go back for the viewers or listeners. So Foundation Aid. Mike, is this going to be a video? Um, is it going to be a video of it or just listeners? No, no. So for the, so for the listening audience, the Foundation Aid um, is the main source of money for schools. So it depends on the number of students and the students' needs. So if you look on the chart that Amanda has up here, um, there was a proposal for 1.9 billion. Um, what happened, it's frozen. Um, so that's gonna be a problem. So take for example, um, Amanda was speaking about her students who are multilingual learners, speak other languages than English. So they are gonna have lots of needs, plus the amount of students in each school. So if we're not getting the money to provide a listening device for these students or to provide an extra teacher, a, a certified um, bi, um, bilingual teacher or whatever sort of teacher might be in that um, school for instruction, uh, it's, it's gonna lead to bigger class sizes and the students not getting the achievement as we're trying to close these achievements gap. Am I right, Amanda? Absolutely, yeah. We're looking at a decrease of $200 in, per student in funding, in, um, whereas uh, other districts and in higher income areas are seeing much less, maybe $15 less per, per student. Um, there's some reporting that I've seen recently about, about the decreases in funding. Mm -hmm. Charter schools also, you saw what happened. They used that as a, um, a pork. Um, throwing charter schools in it. Um, I want to point out also, Amanda, if I may, school climate. As you know, Mike, a lot of our students have um, social emotional needs. As adults, we have social emotional needs also. Um, so if you see here, a uh, proposal for 20 million, they only gave $10 million. As a lot of community groups, parent groups, advocate groups like our groups, we're advocating for restorative justice in our, in our schools, for wraparound services. And, and the trauma-informed education, you had a chancellor talking about it, but to just talk is just talk. You gotta walk it like you talk it. So um, we need these monies in, in the schools um, to help provide um, the social um, um, well-being for these students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. as of last year, things were really looking more positive uh, in terms of these, the school climate and the culturally responsive education. Uh, at least that's what I've seen in our district and District 30 in Queens. There was a real focus at my my own children's school for restorative justice, um, and at my school as well uh, for culturally responsive uh, texts, for example, uh, books that are written by um, by authors from the communities of our students or from the countries of our students, um, and. And that, as we see here um, in the slide, is the funding is cut severely, or it's nowhere near what we need to offer the diverse curricula that, uh, that reflects our students and that can engage our students to give them uh, an equal opportunity to learn as their counterparts in wealthier districts in the, in the state. Uh, and so, and now the, yes, also here, there's new yep. power to the governor. Yep. This is really that. bad. Gives the governor off, the governor's office the power to make ongoing cuts through New York state budget through the year uh, to schools, hospitals, and cities. So here's, this is really where, why we're can, really pushing and continuing. And we, so we, um, we've been saying now, we've been, doing actions virtually for several weeks now at our, at our school level, sometimes with the chapter of the union at different schools. Uh, we've been doing this across the state, uh, helping teachers reach out to their legislators. A lot of times people just don't even know who their legislator is, right? Because our legislators are not, haven't you know, exactly been responsive to people's needs for a long time. Uh, so, we started doing that saying tax the rich fund our schools 
And now we're getting a little bit more specific in our work and looking at, you know, it's a desperate situation. We've really got to make this happen now. So we're looking at specific bills that we can move our legislators to, uh, to co-sponsor. Don't just tell us that you're, you agree and you're in favor of taxing the rich. We need to see your leadership here. We need to see you speaking out and we need to see you make sure that you're co-sponsoring these bills because there are a number of them out there to tax the rich. And so it's just a matter of getting them passed, making it happen. Is that, is that what these uh, bills for Robert Jackson and Linda Rosenthal? Uh, yeah. Are there any other uh, elements in those bills aside from taxing the rich? Or uh, can you explain those a little bit more? Yeah. So uh, I want to talk about four of them. <laughs> Uh, just briefly, I won't spend too much time, but they, so you know that they're, they're really a number. We have time. You can go. We have time. Oh, okay. Well, um, I don't want to bore anyone <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that case. But here, we've got this bill, the Ultra Millionaires Income Tax. It sounds like this one is, uh, I just want to talk about the ones that seem to be most viable, that we, where we can really make a difference as teachers across the state, as families. Let's really push for this. This one would extend the top state income tax rate to 11.82%, which is not even the highest rate. <laughs> um, but And this would be only for New Yorkers whose income is over 100 million, and it establishes new brackets below uh, such top rate and directs the revenue from such rate increases to foundation aid. So I'm reading the, directly from the summary of the bill. Uh, and so this foundation aid is money that is owed to our schools from the campaign for fiscal equity uh, ruling years ago. Uh, and so what we're gonna do on our upcoming actions is here we have the, the names of the bill, that's Robert Jackson sponsored, Linda Rosenthal. So we've gotta look it up and make sure that our local elected officials have signed on to this one, this ultra millionaires tax. The next one is the pied -a terre tax. Now this one, the summary is, imposes an additional tax surcharge on certain non-primary residents class one and class two properties in New York City. And as I understand, this is for people who, this would be a tax on people's second homes worth five million and more. So it's not a primary residence, it's a second home. Uh, and this, this also has pretty good uh, support among the legislators. This one would raise 650 or more million dollars, 650 million a year. And so we have some details about that. That's Senate Bill 44, Brad Hoyleman sponsored it, and Assembly Bill 4540, Deborah Glick sponsored that. The next one, the third one, is the Mark to Market Wealth Tax. This one was just introduced by my state senator, Jessica Ramos. It establishes a billionaire uh, mark to market tax, taxing residents with $1 billion or more in net assets and directs revenue from such tax into a worker bailout fund. It establishes a worker bailout program providing workers traditionally excluded from wage protection programs access to unemployment benefits. So this one is actually not specifically for education, but it's going to raise a lot of money, 10 billion or more per year. And, um, and it really it would get to the, our families in our schools and provide what they need because we're seeing families who have no food, no, uh, you know, no job at this point, and uh, they're really desperate. And, and the last one was actually just introduced uh, by Shelley Mayer, who is a se state senator, and she's chair of the education committee. So that, uh, to me, shows that this is, this is a good sign because if the ed chair of the education committee is introducing this, I'm hoping it'll get uh, more traction. It is called the Shared Health Assessment to Rebuild Education. And the summary is it relates to extending the top state income tax rate for those that make five million or more with such additional funds provides for additional school aid for the general support of public schools and for additional operating support for SUNY and CUNY. And this would raise 
10 billion or more a year. And I know that PSE CUNY is very much uh, behind this in favor of this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's Senate Bill 8329. So I just went over four very specific pieces of legislation that look pretty good, could raise a lot of money for our state, not just in education, but also for healthcare and all and and uh, and for low income people. So, you know, this this is really what we need in this time. There's just there's just no way that Cuomo can say that we don't have the money because we do. It's there. We just need the will to to raise that money. Um, we have to hold the politicians accountable. So we have the action plan. OK. Um, how did how was the um, the food program? during this pandemic. I've heard very little uh, news on, on how those children were being fed. Do you have any idea in, in your area, in your school, whether those kids were, were set up with uh, decent programs? Yeah, uh, so there is food being distributed at the schools. It's available to adults as well. In fact, my husband goes a couple times a week he goes early. Uh, we know we you can find out the school closest to you that has the program. Uh, so my husband goes out pretty early, tries to identify, the, make sure the line isn't too long. Usually if you go early enough, it's not too long. So I encourage mm -hmm. listeners to go ahead and, and access that food that's available to all of us. Um, you know, it's a universal program. So make use of it you can uh so you go in and you don't have to bring your whole family you go in and just ask uh for you know say you've got family of four whatever they'll they'll uh tell you how many meals to go you can you can take now you know this is just it's mostly peanut butter and jelly sandwiches some fruit some milk so it's uh you know it's really not ideal in terms of living on long term so i will say that it's a great it's a great uh, service that we have, but uh, long term, it's just not uh, not healthy <laughs> in terms of like you need more variety in your in your diet. So um, there are mutual aid networks. I can just speak for myself in Queens. I know a number of mutual aid networks. These are just volunteers, though. They're mm -hmm. working with um, some of our our local legislators, but it's mainly volunteers getting donations from the community. And so we have a I have a friend who's going out delivering food to people who request it and she'll do 80 uh, homes, drop bags of produce to 80 homes on Tuesdays and Fridays is what they're doing. And she was telling me, you know, we can do this for, for a couple months. We've got all these volunteers helping out, but long-term it's just not going to work. So we're, yeah, and, and my students have benefited from those programs too, but I'm really worried long-term and it looks like we're, we're going to be in this for a while. Yeah. Some of the, some of the things that the governor has said about opening New York city doesn't seem like he's going to op do anything before maybe July. Um, and it w wasn't there a plan he was requesting from the schools on how they would open uh, regionally? Or was I mistaken about uh, No, I think he's looking into it. He has compiled, and that's another story. We don't want to divert where he has created this advisory councils that he set up for different aspects, oh, education all and all that stuff. So, yeah. And he hasn't in, uh, included a teacher. I think Randy Weingarten had to squeeze herself in um, to sit on one of his teams. So um, uh, that's Bill Gates' team. But the advisory with the with the count with the um, what school should look like when they reopen doesn't have a New York City teacher sitting on it. Yeah, that's great. All right, great. So so um, what's your next step? You're you're organizing now. How are you? Uh, building your organization? So we've been doing these 30 minutes of action virtually, and our next one is coming up on Tuesday, May 19th at 4.30. And uh, you'll be able to go to the more website to find that within the next couple of days. And anyone is welcome to sign up, not just teachers, but we wanna have teachers, families, uh, parents, kids from, from across the state 
reaching out to our legislators and to Cuomo. Uh, and so we have a we make it real easy for everyone to participate. You, you do have to be at a computer though and have a phone with you, but we get it done in 30 minutes. And as you can see in the slide, well, if you can see the slide in front of in, uh, that I have up here, it says contact your state legislators. If you don't know them, no worries. We have a, a link here so you can just plug in your address and get the people you need to reach, their phone number, their email. And then we give a sample letter. Uh, I'm writing to urge you to tax the rich in New York and fully fund our schools. And we have some, uh, some suggested language and also the, the bills that we are promoting. And we need you to reject a plan that includes cuts and we need you to raise re revenue by taxing the ultra wealthy. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is something we say, okay, uh, mute yourself, go make these calls right now. And so everyone goes and makes the calls or sends the email to these folks. And then we come back and we do a second step, uh, which is social media, because we know that we can't, you know, just rely on uh, our legislators. They might not be responsive <laughs> to us. They likely are not responsive to us because they are beholden to their funders. These are by and large corporate Democrats or corporate Republicans uh, across the state. So we want to educate our colleagues too, our neighbors, our friends, families, uh, co-workers. Uh, and so we can do that through social media, but we can also really target and call out these people too, uh, in terms of like uh, the majority leaders, Carl Histe, Andrea Stewart Cousins, our own, um, our own legislators and say, Hey, uh, Carl Hasty, 92% of New York voters support taxing the ultra wealthy. How about you? Will you tax the ultra wealthy? And uh, so we can put them on the spot as as a group, as long as it's more than more than just me, more than Myri. It's got to be a lot of lot of people across the state doing this. I would think so, the parents would want to dive into this yeah. as much as possible. I mean, these are their children that are being affected. So. Uh, well, I'm absolutely, to, yeah. Just We're very to, concerned. Yeah. So. That yeah, our 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 schools um, are are going to, you know, already we don't have the summer youth employment program. A lot of teens rely on that, and then also going down to younger kids too, because our younger kids need things to do in the summer. <laughs> uh, although of course we don't know what that's going to look like. Look like. But even for uh, for teens, they could be doing. Um, there are, there are jobs that they could do even virtually uh, through the Summer Youth Employment Program. And those families really rely on, on that fund, those funds and students need that, um, need to continue, uh, you know, hands-on work in the summer. And so that's a real loss to our community and, and to, to families. So families are definitely very concerned and have been joining us on these calls as well. And here you can see we're also encouraging people take make a sign that says tax the billionaires, fund our schools, take take a photo, put it on Instagram, on Facebook. So let let everyone know that uh, that what you're doing, that you're standing up for our schools. And that says a lot to people in the community that you know, we know what's going on, we know what these bills are. You can't you can't fool us. We know that there's money there. Don't tell us that there's no money. Um, because certainly in my community, I know a lot of people uh, last month I was hearing, oh no, there's Cuomo is wonderful, right? He's wonderful compared to Trump. So, you know, we have to, we have to be thankful for what we've got. That's what people were saying. And, and we said, no, look at what Cuomo is doing. So I think our, our work has been, you know, has helped educate people who were just looking at Cuomo's PowerPoints and saying, well, he's better than Trump. <laughs> Maybe, but what's he really doing? Right, right. So I want to echo what um, Amanda is saying. So if you see those hashtags, hashtags make billionaires pay, hashtag protect NY schools, and um, so forth. So it's also been used in schools. I just want to elaborate. Um, apart from more and other allies and community groups, it's also done on um, organic level in schools. I was appreciative of Amanda. Um, teaching us about this. 
and I was able to bring it to my school and I was able to do a chapter meeting, which is what the UFT contract allows us to have meeting with our staff once a month. And they were able to do that on that instantaneous. That's how it becomes effective when you have 30, 40, 50 people instantaneously um, tagging these politicians are just making the statement, you need to protect our schools now. So I just want to say that. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that you'd like to do, cover before uh, we leave here today? I think, Amanda, you should talk about um, the Rochester schools, which is our allies are facing a struggle as well. Maybe we could have them on the next time for the listeners. Yeah. Well, certainly we could have a special uh, event. So, Amanda, we'll just give you a segue. Into, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have, Myra and I have been working with um, some teachers in other parts of the state, which is really exciting because, of course, this fight really needs to be statewide at the state level. Uh, and so it's, um, uh, it's, you realize that it's sometimes it's, it's worse in other parts of the state than New York City and, or, or this is what is to come for us. So, you know, we're, we're not in this alone. We are all connected uh, and as teachers and public school advocates and public school families. So we really got to support each other and uh, look at the broader picture. So it's really great to be developing these networks. And of course, we've seen an, we've seen tremendous progress across the country with leaders in teachers standing up. We've seen the wildcat strikes, uh, teachers from West Virginia to LA um, standing up and, and many more places standing up, um, walking out, students supporting them, family supporting them. Um, so that, well, they're way ahead of us. And, uh, but that's, we've got to build our power here too in New York. So that's what we're working toward. Yeah. Before we go, I'd like to touch on one other thing that, uh, that that's very important. One thing that I'm very concerned with uh, are the unions. How, how are the, the teacher unions uh, dealing with the governor. What do we have to do as individuals to help get the unions more power? Well, if you're a union member, be active in your union, no matter what union that is. Um, yeah, it's unfortunately, a lot of our unions um, are very uh, top down. Uh, they they that's are the not very democratic. Unions. Yeah, that's the problem with most most unions. It's all top down, and and the the workers are really having to struggle. Um, so I'll just shoot straight, Mike. You know I'm a shoot straighter. So we have had the UFT here in bed with um, Como um, for years, on and off, bad relationships, um, in and out, um, dancing around. So we haven't heard them really calling him out yet on it. To, to find the solution, which is to tax the billionaires. They're not saying that yet fully. We really want to hear that from the UFT. NYSUT, um, to some extent, is trying to say it, but they're not. PSC, um, um, the rank and filers. So it's just the rank and filers within these groups are doing this work. Uh, we have to hold our leaders accountable. We just had a meeting this evening with um, with Mo Growth, they're talking, he's targeting Washington, and I understand he's targeting P45 to send a federal stimulus package. However, we're here in New York, we have revenues here, like Amanda said, uh, P45 is doing his thing. We need to take care of ours right here in our own backyard. We don't, we, we go anywhere else. Well, Tax the billionaires. There's something else that I did that I, if I can help in any way to bring in the unions more to do something to educate the people and uh, because this country is in dire need of stronger unions, not just teacher unions, but unions in general. Uh, we've lost too many jobs and it looks like the governor wants to cut back on teachers. So we need to fix this uh, and we need to build up our unions again. So if there's anything I can do to help, uh, you know, uh, any videos or anything that I can push out. We're going to gonna need you. Let yeah. me know. Okay. We're going to need your money. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This, the unions, uh, certainly our union, the UFT, uh, they want to 
pretend that this is a, a battle of, uh, you know, Democrats versus Trump. <laughs> and that's really not it. We, it's a battle of the 99% versus the billionaires and the corporate Democrats. That is where the contradiction lies. And we need to, that's, that's, um, that's where we, where we can step up as union members. We have more, uh, we can step up and do this work as if, you know, and practice our leadership until the time when we can really take uh, full leadership of our union, hopefully at some point. Um, and that's certainly what we saw in, in uh, LA, for example, and in Chicago, there were uh, dissident un caucuses, union caucuses that did gain power uh, within their union. And that's where we see great progress happening. So we've got some work to do here in New York City. Yeah. Mario, are you considering running again? I won't run again, but um, I will say that it was such a pleasure to run and shake up the leadership a bit um, to let them know that rank and filers, you know, um, don't sit around and <laughs> gazing, daydreaming. Uh, rank and filers are working for social justice, housing, like you and I, Mike, and others. I've been down in Chinatown talking about the Chinese um, folks who are displaced by the towers. Man. You have never seen the UFT leadership there. You have seen us from the movement of rank and file educators. Those people who were um, um, the Jimmy Jazz guy who owned that apartment building and wanted to displace those residents and when they had went on a hunger strike. So you was there, people from Moore who was there, Jan Antish. Mm -hmm. So we have always been in this type of social justice efforts and so on. We talk about um, other issues, um, a Black Lives Matter, the problems our students face. The UFT don't want any qualms with that. But all of a sudden, everybody's talking about, oh, these disparities. Where were you before when we we're talking about this? So the story's alive and well, Mike. Uh, we're going to need you. We're going to need some videos. We're going to need you to put this out on a regular, maybe a regular podcast, because we're going to be doing lots of work, and we're going to need your help as well, CUNY and, um, and the public school system. Okay. Well, you have my number, so let me know what you need. Uh, whatever I can do, I'll do. Um, you know, th th what, what's re really driven me crazy is the fact that the politicians refuse to listen uh, and they forget who puts them in those offices. And we have to stir people up enough to take those people out of office and let them start listening to us. So, so I, I like, like to thank both of you for joining Occupy Radio today. And uh, I wish you well. And I will try and do whatever I can to push this out to as many people as possible. So thank you so much. Again. Thank you, Amanda. We've got to do this again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye. All right. Good.